What's up guys, welcome to Supercars of London. Welcome back to the Arden Green DB11. You joined me down in Winchester. Yesterday when I finished filming, I drove back to Watford, got some miles under my belt, and then attempted to travel around the M25 at rush hour on a Friday evening. It is now Saturday morning, and the weekend for me begins. I have to drive from here, Winchester, to Welling. It is around two hours away, and I thought it was the perfect opportunity to treat this car how it is meant to be driven, a GT car, what it is like on the motorway how comfortable is it what is its mpg like and then once we get to Wellin, i'm going to have some lunch and basically this video is going to be documenting what i get up to on the weekend that aston martin have lent me a db11 and i want to take full advantage of this car put as many miles on it as possible so i might have to fill it up with fuel as well but first stop is breakfast so let's um actually i don't i haven't seen any cup holders in so let's grab some breakfast and then get on our way Okay, so this little section here is the center storage facility in the uh, Aston Martin. And as you can see, there's not... Oh, hold on a minute. I think I found a cup holder. I don't know whether I broke it there. Oh, okay. And then I suppose we can move that up. Oh, they're not as... Let me quickly grab the camera. A bit flimsy for a, for a car of this caliber of luxury. But they'll do the job. We're filled up. We have got a full tank and the range is telling me 327 miles. Now I know that that is going to change the more the car gets accustomed to this fuel and my driving style. And what I'm attempting to do on the way home on the M3 and on the M25 is trying to get my MPG up as high as possible. We've got this sort of dynamic live consumption MPG reader on the right hand side of my dials here, which is really cool. And hopefully I can get it all the way up to 40. I'm on 40. MPG. So the engine is running in super efficient mode. So let's just track the range, see how we get on, and enjoy the heated seats or air conditioned seats. This has got the option for air conditioned seats, which I have not experienced in my life before. And I don't particularly want to do it today either because it is telling me that it's eight degrees outside heated seats for the win. We have hit average speed checks of 50 miles an hour, meaning the slower the car goes, no that doesn't actually work, the slower the car goes the more fuel efficient it is. Anyway, I'm keeping it as efficient as possible. My range crept to 572 miles out of an Aston Martin V12. That is unheard of. It is now slowly creeping back down. We're on 567 miles. It puts my BMW M3 to shame. It puts my AMG GTS to shame. Oh, we go, 577, 577. If this goes anywhere near 600 miles, then I, just, I will just carry on driving. I will not stop and I will 
just drive on one tank 600 miles in this car because I don't think anyone has ever done that in any Aston Martin, ever. I could get a world record, the longest continuous drive on one tank of fuel in an Aston Martin of all time. 577 miles, the range is telling me. 599, we are getting over 600. Let's jump to 607. 607 on the range, it is staying at 607 from uh, Aston Martin V12. Now this car, it still does have a big fuel tank. I had half a tank and I filled it all the way to the top and it cost me, I think it cost me 48 pounds. It was about 40, 45 liters. So it's definitely got over 85 liters worth of fuel. Oh, it's dropped down to 603. Where can you drive? You can drive way past Edinburgh. Way past Edinburgh. Good morning, it is Sunday morning and as most Aston Martin enthusiasts would probably agree with me that Sunday morning is a perfect opportunity to take your beloved pride and joy for a drive and funnily enough I've driven 10 minutes from my house and I've already seen two Aston Martins, a very stunning 2016 all blacked out Aston Martin Vantage and a DB9 and today I am looking for some country roads to put this car to a more performance based test I've done the GT, this is a phenomenal GT car, I have now put around 300 miles on this car and over the next sort of four to five minutes of the video I'm going to be going over how I feel or how this car makes me feel putting the power down or trying to put the power down and going for an absolute blast so we've got an amazing few miles ahead of us so uh, let's just strap the GoPro up try and get as many angles as possible try and capture the sound the emotion and also the experience that I'm about to face in the V12 beast so welcome probably to the first time that I've been able to get a wide angle lens on my GoPro of the luxurious and impeccably specced Aston Martin DB11 interior I've currently got the car in Sport Plus because I can't physically take it out of this mode the car sings to me so much even at low revs on the rumbles the v12 still shines through and i've now driven this car for around 300 to 400 miles i've done the gt drive i've driven this car around watford which i suppose is is quite a big town and now I'm on the country road, so it is my turn to test out this car's performance but in general, just work out how fast this car is and how good this is as a performance car. Aston Martin have already stated this is their Grand Tour, which is why their most comfortable setting on suspension and engine mode is called GT mode. But I'm here to test out the Sport Plus on the suspension mode making sure that I'm in all of the modes. So I've now firmed up the suspension and I've got the engine mode fully in Sport Plus. <laughs> Let's talk about the performance. I've got everything in Sport Plus. I've got some fantastic country roads ahead of me. And it's a Sunday morning, which means that it, is, that it is the perfect opportunity to go for a Sunday drive. And I haven't really had the opportunity to put my foot down, so I'm a little bit nervous. But why not? Let's just go for it. squeezed the throttle to about 60% there and it felt like a fighter jet the thrust of this car this car I, I don't think this is slow I haven't put my foot flat to the floor yet but 40-50% is absolutely fine Wait for the straight first. Oh, a little wiggle there from the traction control. We are on a dry road. It is eight degrees Celsius outside, but it is fully dry outside. So you'd like to think that this car would get adequate grip, but with 600 brake horsepower, we are always gonna be fighting for traction through the rear wheels. But I feel that 
Everyone else is up for a Sunday drive this morning. We've got a Vauxhall Sofia, we've got a Renault Megane there. Oh, everyone's turning off. This is a good sign. Let's bring it back down the rev range. I've got it in manual mode. I can just press drive here on the button and it goes back into automatic, but using the paddles, very easy to take over. And here we go. The gear shifts are incredibly smooth. See what I mean by wanting to rev? of 6,000 RPM or 6,500 RPM. It wiggled. Oh, you can still feel the gear shift shunt into the next gear. It's not as smooth as uh, some of the other cars with double clutch, but the steering wheel, it is light. It's a lot lighter than I was expecting. It's a lot lighter than the, uh, than the V12 of uh, Aston Martin prior to this, but that does not take away from the fact that it is very direct. You get the feeling through the steering as well, making it very easy to pilot this car around these country roads. And I have to say, the soundtrack is just to die for, going over a bit of a crest here, around the corner. Squeeze on the... Oh, it just... It feels like a fighter jet when you're squeezing the throttle. The best way to describe it, when you're just about to take off on a runway on any sort of commercial airline and you feel the pilot push the thrust to 100%, you feel the engines whirring up and powering up to their full maximum capacity, but you don't get the initial power that you expected. And all of a sudden, it bangs in, you are thrown to the back of the seat, that is the closest thing that I can describe to this car when you plant your foot down on the floor. You get the initial rumble from the V12, which is fantastic from a twin turbo. I have to give it to Aston Martin. It sounds incredible for a twin turbo. That was the one thing that I was worried about when I heard that Aston Martin were gonna be doing a twin turbo engine. Ferrari did it, and personally, I know they've got the performance out of it. It does not sound the same. The California T sounds absolutely awful. The 488 sounds slightly better, but you still need an aftermarket exhaust, and even then, you're getting a massive, massive turbo override compared to the exhaust tone, whereas this, really don't get much of a turbo noise which is, is something crucial I feel to the Aston Martin brand as you can tell from this video I've fallen in love with the DB11 and I'm gonna be sad to handing the keys back but before I do I am going to be making a video dedicated to the sound of this car with the aim of capturing all of the characteristics that this engine and exhaust are able to offer and how have Aston Martin been able to keep the traditional Aston Martin V12 sound. I, I, I don't particularly know but basically I just want to make a 10 minute video of the sound of this car so I'm going to be trying to find tunnels, I'm going to be going for more blasts on country roads and just enjoying this car one more time before I have to hand the keys back. So thank you for watching. Please give it a thumbs up if you've enjoyed this video. And uh, I look forward to seeing you very, very soon. And uh, if you don't tune in to another Supercars of London video before the new year, Merry Christmas and have a Happy New Year. I'll probably be saying that at the end of all of my videos. So um, yeah, get used to that. It is Christmas time. It is time to get excited. I'm driving past a man in a Santa's hat. Hello, Santa. I will see you soon, guys. Thank you for watching. Woohoo!